welcome you all to the module 6 of municipal solid waste management so this is the part 1 video of the municipal solid waste management the main topics under the module 6 are composting types of composting indoor process and bangalore process the main advantages and disadvantages of the two processes anaerobic digestion of waste and biogas digesters now we can see composting what is composting composting it is defined as a controlled aerobic or anaerobic biological conversion of organic waste into complex stable material that is the process can be aerobic that is in the presence of oxygen or it can be anaerobic in the absence of oxygen anyhow the final product it should be a complex stable material that uh, that complex stable material we call it as compost the final product has number of beneficial uses and the most commonly it is used for agriculture and landscaping. The composting of municipal solid waste, agricultural waste that is the plant residues and animal manure, food factory waste that is the waste coming from the food processing industries. Then the waste coming from the municipal waste treatment plant is increasingly used worldwide as a means of waste management. Now the composition of municipal solid waste. From this particular figure we, we can understand that about 40% of the waste it is the paper waste and the food waste it is about 15%. That means uh, the majority of the waste that is paper, cardboard, food waste, yard waste, wood etc that com that uh, comprises the majority of the municipal solid waste and all these waste that these are the biodegradable components coming in the municipal solid waste so these biodegradable components it can be uh, it, uh, that can be converted into a compost or these waste it can be treated by means of the composting process now the mechanism of composting composting is a biochemical process in which aerobic and anaerobic microorganisms decompose the organic matter into a valuable manure called as compost so this is the particular figure in this the organic matter under the temperature of 55 to 60 degrees celsius that is in the mesophilic state and the temperature about first thing that is 25 to 30 degree celsius it promote the mesophilic microbes for the rapid decomposition and finally it is converted into the compost now this is the composting process the raw materials mainly used for the compost it is the organic matter that is which has to be treated then the minerals including nitrogen and other nutrients water in the presence of microorganism it is converted ultimately into the finished compost which contains uh, carbon chemical energy nitrogen protein humus etc and uh, those released are water is released heat is released and carbon dioxide is released so it this composting process in this particular figure it takes place in the presence of oxygen the composting can also be anaerobic that is in the absence of oxygen so this is a flow chart showing the steps involved in the aerobic composting process so we can see the steps that is the organic fraction of municipal solid waste the organic fraction i said it is uh, it includes the paper waste food waste coming from the uh, residential buildings as well as from the food processing industries cardboard etc these constitute the organic fraction of municipal solid waste so it is first process it is the aerated pile composting that is in the presence of oxygen then the curing that is little bit water is added then the drying process after that screening then the final compost is obtained which is distributed so in the both the two process that is the aerated pile composting and curing the aeration is provided then the factors affecting the composting process so the principal environmental factors regulating the speed and degree of decomposition include nutrient levels nutrient balance aeration 
moisture, temperature, pH and particulars and the particle size of the feedstock material. Then the role of microorganism in composting. The role of microorganism it is very important in the composting process. So the composting it is an aerobic biological process can also be anaerobic. A diverse consortium of microorganism acting concurrently controls the process. The most active microorganisms taking part in the composting process are bacteria, fungi, protozoa and rotifers. These organisms are naturally present in most organic materials including the food waste, soil, soil, soils, leaves, gra grass clippings and other organics. Now we can see what are the organisms involved in composting in detail. So the first organism that is microorganism is the bacteria. The bacteria it is responsible for most of the decomposition and heat generation in the compost. At the beginning of the composting process, um, mesophilic bacteria will predominate and mesophilic bacteria it, it is uh, survives in the range of 0 to 40 degrees Celsius. It predominates, it heats up above 40 degrees Celsius. And then what happened? The second bacteria that is thermophilic bacteria act upon the waste. The, so the first thing the mesophilic bacteria act upon the waste and the second the higher temperature bacteria that is the thermophilic bacteria take over the process. At the highest compost temperature bacteria of the genus thermus it dominates when temperature again, again increases. So some examples are bacillus, brevis etc. Now the second category that is protozoa. Protozoa we know it is a one cell microscopic animals. These are found in water droplets in the compost but play a relatively minor role in decomposition. Next one is the rotifers. Rotifers are microscopic multicellular organisms also found in films of water in the compost. They feed on the organic matter and also ingest bacteria and fungi. Now the next very important thing is the earthworms. We know that earthworm are the most important of the large physical decomposers in a compost pile. Earthworms ingest the organic matter and digest it with the help of tiny stones in their gizzards. The worm leave dark fertile castings behind. The worm can also produce its weight in castings each day. These castings are rich in plant nutrients such as nitrogen, calcium, magnesium and phosphorus that might otherwise be unavailable to the plants. Now the phases of composting. So we have already discussed about the bacteria taking place in the composting process. We said that in the first stage the mesophilic bacteria under take place in the composting process and in the next stage that is when the temperature increases thermophilic bacteria takes place and then the temperature decreases and uh, at last the composting pro that is the compost is produced the final manure is produced so we can see in this particular graph the first stage that is the mesophilic bacteria uh, takes place in the composting process and then the thermophilic bacteria in the last stage, the compost gets matured and uh, it turns into the final state that is the humus. The phases of composting in detail. The initial decomposition it is carried out the, by the mesophilic microorganisms which rapidly break down the soluble, readable, degradable compounds. As the temperature rises above 40 degrees Celsius, the mesophilic bacteria are replaced by the thermophilic bacteria at a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius and above. Many organisms that are human or plant pathogens are destroyed. During the thermophilic phase, high temperature accelerate the breakdown of proteins, fats and complex carbohydrates like cellulose and hemicellulose, the major structural molecules in the plants. The temperature then what happens it gradually decreases and mesophilic microorganisms once again take over for the final phase of curing or maturation of the remaining organic matter. So in the initial stage mesophilic bacteria takes place in composting process and then it moves to the thermophilic bacteria and after a particular stage the temperature again decreases and the mesophilic microorganism again take place in the final phase of composting process. 
the benefits of composting process composting it improves the quality of soil and for this reason it is considered as a soil conditioner it contains a variety of basic nutrients required for the healthy growth of plants in addition to the nitrogen phosphorus and potassium certain micronutrients that is manganese copper iron and zinc are also found in the compost which helps them to control diseases and insects compost improves the structure and texture of the soil enable them to retain the nutrients moisture and air for the betterment of growth of plants